But moving on towards the next step, I would like to uh, welcome the Murugeshan Krishna, former Director of General Central Power Research Institute, Independent Consultant. So the first slide uh, talk about big data, right? Yes, yes, yes. The first slide is only a, a cloud with big data. Yeah. Uh, now I can, uh, you can put it on um, normal mode, you know? Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, yes. Presentation mode. Right side it should be there, no? Yes, yes. Yeah. I think I can manage it. No, no issue, no issue. One second. One minute, one minute. Yes. Uh, let me start. Uh, friends, um, this particular uh, presentation will uh, take you through in you know, a various uh, jargons and um, various stages of uh, the cloud uh, technologies and all nitty gritty about it. So that at the end of the session, you will understand that uh, what are things available, you know, what, what to be done, what are all the apprehension, what to be done like that. So friends, <clears throat> uh, the cloud, though it may look, uh, you know, new to us, but all over the world, the world IT world has already moved on to this, uh, the cloud uh, architecture and all such things. So they, they, they understand better, but this is also equally important for us. The reason is that now the utilities are generating mind boggling data. So you need to store it and retrieve it safely. So for that, previously we were, we were going for you know, dedicated uh, servers, dedicated uh, communication line, dedicated software and uh, backup software, this one, that one. Because you take just example, uh, build generation. You just see that, uh, say, about um, you know, uh, 10 million uh, build generation in Bescom itself per month. Then you can see that it is just a billing data. When advanced metering infrastructure comes into picture, and uh, added to that, uh, now, uh, we add this. Um, uh, renewable energy, then uh, storage, rooftop, then uh, you have a uh, distribution automation systems. No, no, we have a separate uh, center for uh, distribution automation center, separate center for uh, AMI. The one is for city as well as under the RAP, DRP. So friends, and then added to that, we are going to add electric vehicle also. Friends, Little electric vehicle looks very small, but the nitty gritty associated with this electric vehicle charging and discharging is enormous. It has to communicate with this uh, <clears throat> charging infrastructure. And the charging infrastructure has to talk to the, you know, the big uh, network behind it. Then, you know, you say, suppose a million uh, uh, cars getting charged. So what will happen to your grid? Then uh, the, the various charges. Then once the vehicle is charged and even it can work as a you know, storage and it can give a little power to the grid when it needed. So friends, it is becoming complicated, but the mechanism it is built in correctly, all such things, it is possible that we can reach the smart grid um, framework. But in this process, you know, we generate 
mind boggling data so the data needs to be stored retrieved safely and all such things whether we, we whether existing setup setup is it feasible or what are the options available so as we we have seen the technology in the last 20 years you know from dial up line to you know std to then we have come to 2g 3g 4g 5g like that so we are also moving through that so the friends this big data <clears throat> generation you know keeping it in cloud and uh, safely uh, to the uh, to driving in that you know these are all already established only thing you know for utility since the data generation is so large it needed is so we will go to the next next slide so friends this particular slide it tells that what are the countries you know how much they are spending where do they spending what are the leading countries in this you know silently india is doing lot of things because in india is a very large country and uh, we are doing extremely well you can see that in this one you know india is just behind china in terms of uh, you know growth in you know, growth is india and china they are all the leading and if you see that total it spending already done it you can see that united us uk canada poland netherland australia they they top but the spending growth growth rate is very high only we are lagging behind in china so already we are there we are in this race it is not that no cloud spending we are not lagging <clears throat> here we are at the pattern the top and first base next so friends this is a common this particular uh, cloud uh, technology is common for everything whether you talk about it setup or uh, non it setup but we will focus only to the utility especially utility in the sense both water as well as electricity you know comes under utility but in the that utility also we focus only on electric utility <clears throat> and as i mentioned that you know we are we are fast basing to implement a smart grid various building blocks are there start with it is a smart meter and advanced metering infrastructure that is a base building block for the smart grid or upon which the substation automation and distribution automation scada and renewable energy storage electric vehicle in a regulation all are building on this particular thing to have your smart grid framework so friends <clears throat> so the electric utility deploy <clears throat> smart meters and record terabytes of data which everybody knows no no we are in the at the, the brim of the big transition already the various utilities including bescom if not today tomorrow they will implement this advanced metering infrastructure where you can participate you know you can able to know the things you can able to read in your mobile number mobile all the data or anything is happening you can see that remotely you can monitor it. so many things will comes into picture so you can see that <clears throat> there is a not room big enough to house the data on site so utility needs another option if you have already if anyone has seen the distribution automation center in bescom you know it is available in both in hsr lab in rajaji nagar you can see that mind boggling setup is available already you know collecting data storing all such things added to that these are all the things which are all in the anvil it's not that we it's not it is going to happen very shortly so friends so it might be cloud computing we will come back what is cloud computing and all such thing <clears throat> so offers a scalable solution unlimited data computation system analyze all such things this is what we are also told when the smart grid was introduced you know way back in 2001 2002 it was oh yeah, it is going to offer so many things yes yeah, it is going to offer so many advantages but you need to follow certain amount of you know, rules and regulation to attain that what is that smart grid in a framework 
you can get yes power supply you want the low cost reliability should be ensured and uh, it should be you know affordable so that it took happen you need to do so many automation so many thing you need to do that like that the cloud is also you know we are we telling you know we all it's not a rosy picture yes there but you need to take what we are, we are now we are taking care of our smart grid like that. next slide ha huh. now we say that what is cloud computing this can be a daunting anyone because you know we are we are transitioning transitioning from one what we have to somewhere the data is available and hardware software that can be manipulated managed easily within arm reach are becoming the worn out security blanket so all such thing will vanish is something like you know you, you have a laptop or your desktop you know your server is somewhere else you have only client you know all the data is stored like that comparing that comfortable storage habit within visible cloud many people perceive a new space as too unfamiliar and unfriendly and out there somewhere else the change prompts question from those with little or no understanding of the cloud how can we store all the information process and task on the cloud how can you trust the cloud this is a is everyone's mind it comes next next ha huh. so before going to that we need to understand you know uh, what is the definition and everybody knows about this national institute of standards and technology this is the institute which involved with this uh, lot of um, uh, smart grid initiative were taken and still there are all the driver seat you know for providing documents policies guidelines like that in united states it is a leading institute especially in the smart grid related thing so it it is given a definition it is a model for enabling convenient or demand network on demand network access to a shared pool, pool of configurable computing resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with the minimal management effort or service provided interaction so this is a definition for your cloud computing and now is clear some of the confusing others simply cloud computing uses a network of remote servers hosted on the internet store manage and process data rather than using a personal computer local servers or servers at one location it promotes convenient access availability serviceability next yes <clears throat> but when you talk about cloud computing in a it's, it is it has attributes whatever type whatever uh, uh, type of uh, uh, cloud uh, in a computing you make it or technology you make it available these are all minimum eight Uh, cloud attributes it is off site it is not on site and the third party provider access via internet minimum or, in, or no information technology skill is required to implement it <laughs> like your computer in a, in a under, our normal user do, do not know what is in sight how it operates he only knows how to plug in how to switch on and how to uh, access the application how to use it but he doesn't know what software is doing what hardware is doing what how the communication is going where it access all such so it should be like that so no no go to the previous slide i have not seen this i have not completed the uh, uh, things so i, I uh, uh, sorry 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 sir okay 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 you come to the next slide i i am mistake and yeah thank you very much sorry so minimum or no information technology required to implement it provisioning or equal to self service requesting near real time deployment dynamic and fine grained scaling pricing model fine grained usage based at least available as an option and browser browser and successes system interface equal to web services shared resources 
common versions like that next the previous slide we 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 we, we talked about attributes now we come to the characteristics what are the characteristics on demand service it should be allowed hello uh, it's still avail available allow clients to adjust their level of computing services including the amount of server time and network storage this is accomplished automatically without human interaction in this service with the service provider and it should have broad network access i will go a little faster because i think some more session is uh, aligned afterwards so i will you can, the slide will be given to all of you so you can have a look at it. the resource pooling rabbit elasticity measured services so these are all the five characteristics of cloud computing next i am sorry uh, the heading is uh, not uh, this is a, a cloud technology instead of cloud technology kindly read uh, cloud technology in place of smart grid definition finally that you remove that so what you have is you can see that private cloud you have uh, your user you know the cloud provider and is stored it goes to the internet and get stored here the hybrid both will be having the both you have partly with cloud as well as in the place but in the private both are you know it is uh, controlled by both is in science enterprise again is there next you can see that in the private cloud you have you now your same data can be stored here sorry uh, same customer data can be stored in one of the things here 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 like this but when you come to the private or our individual things so you have so much in a detailed things you have you have established these are all already is available here and uh, but here you have to create it firewall load balancer scalability you have to do that then array of storage next here also that voice smart grid will be removed i will i'll i'll i'll, I'll, I'll give a, a correct form of the things then friends <coughs> again this cloud computing is again classified into four major things most cloud computing cells fall under more four broad category one one is infrastructure as service ias platform service pass serverless fourth one is software as service saas these are sometimes called cloud computing stack because they build on top of one another next and uh, the classification and the definition of each classification what is infrastructure as service this is a most basic category of cloud computing services with ias you rent it infrastructure servers and virtual machines storage network and operating system from cloud provider on a pay as you go basis in the platform as service as a service referred to cloud computing services that supply an on demand environment for developing testing delivering and managing software application this is designed to make it easier for developer to quickly create web or mobile app without worrying about setting up of or managing the underlying infrastructure of servers storage network and database needed for development next this is again serverless overlapping with the pass serverless computing focus on building app and functionality without spending time continuously managing the servers and infrastructure required to do so the cloud provider handles a set of capacity planning server management for you serverless architecture are highly scalable and even driven only using resources when a specific function or trigger occurs 
Last one is software as a service. Software as a service method of delivering software application over the internet on demand and typically on subscription page basis. The cloud providers host and manage the software application and the underlying infrastructure and handle any maintenance like software upgrades, security patching, etc. Next. Now we have to understand what are all public, private, hybrid, or uh, community based, all such things will come to this. So there are there is no one type of cloud computing that is right fit for everyone. Several different cloud computing methods, models, types, and services have evolved to meet this rapidly changing technology needs of organization. So there are uh, different, uh, three different types, or you can say four different types. I have included a community cloud is also there, public, private, hybrid, and community. It all depends on your business model. Next. And what is a public cloud? As we've seen in the previous slide with the pictures, these are all most common type of cloud computing deployment. Resources like server storage are owned and operated by third party cloud service provided and delivered over the internet. With the public cloud, all hardware, software, and other supporting infrastructure are owned and managed by the cloud provider. In the public cloud, you share the same hardware, storage, and network devices with other organizations or cloud tenant, and, and you access services and manage your account using a web browser. Public cloud deployments are frequently used to provide web-based email, online office application, storage and testing development environment. Next. The advantages is lower costs because you only need certainly lower cost because it is um, uh, it is deployed in large size by the developers like that sorry that uh, service provider so certainly the, uh, it is a lower cost no need to purchase uh, hardware it is really a headache because you know uh, computing the processor storage license headache for uh, utility like IT utility because the core competency is providing power supply uninterrupted 24 for 7 a quality service a quarter quality level to the customer that is objective that is a core competency the utilities are having because they're all trained in that these are all you know these are all periphery it is not their you know core business but of course, you need to do that because it is, where, it is where you get the money. So many things. So you need to take care. But it's not your core competency. People are available with a core competency in this area who are um, competent enough, better than us to do that. So lower cost, no maintenance, unlimited scalability, high reliability. And when it comes to the private, Cloud computing resources are used exclusively by one business or organization. Private cloud can be physically located at your organization. The service and infrastructure are always maintained on private network and the hardware software are dedicated solely on your organization. Can make it easier for organization to customize its resources or are used by the government agency, financial institution, and other mid large organization with business critical operations seeking enhanced control over their internet. Next. And this is a more flexibility. Your organization can customize its cloud environment, more control, more scalability. Then comes the hybrid computing. It's a cloud computing that combines on-premises infrastructure or a private cloud with a public cloud. Hybrid cloud allows data and application move between two environment. They choose this one for the reason due to business imperatives such as meeting regulatory 
and data of sovereignty requirements take full advantage of on premise technology investment or addressing low latency issues this is where the hybrid uses the evolved including edge over workloads as well edge computing brings computing power to the cloud to iot devices closer to where the data resides by moving workloads to the edge devices spend less time communicating with the cloud reducing latency and they are even able to operate reliably in extended offline periods next the benefits are and you know, gives organization many advantages greater flexibility more deployment option security compliance and also and demand hybrid cloud computing gives a business the ability to seamless set to scale up their environment on on their premises of the their premise infrastructure the public cloud to handle any flow of without giving third party data access to the entirety of the data it gains flexibility and innovation the public cloud provides by running certain workloads in the cloud keeping while keeping highly sensitive data in their own data center to meet clients needs of the or regulatory requirement next next yeah there are lots of benefits not only allows a company scale up the computing resources it also eliminates the need to make massive capital expenditure to handle short time spikes in demand as well as when the business need to free up local resources will play only for resource they the company pays only for resources they temporarily use instead of having to purchase the program and maintain additional resources next and it has control flexibility cost effective and easiness next next there is a practical oh no 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry, I'm sorry. previous previous one. yes so many customers take advantage of the hybrid cloud to achieve global scale increased reliability ai enabled artificial intelligence enabled security and cost saving offered by the public cloud highly regulated industries data resiliency resiliency requirement may mandate that certain sets of data must kept on premise so if it is a regulatory requirements then the hybrid will work while other workload can reside in public network that way what all things needed by the regulatory affairs and things and you keep it in your premise there remain anything you can always send it to cloud if an application resides in the premises or the private cloud sudden spikes in the demand may overload the capacity such as session event like online shopping or tax filing when demand spikes organization can tap into additional computing resources in the public cloud next so friends this particular slide what are all the differences in a in terms of security private cloud and public cloud performance infrastructure affordability and reliability all it gives a detailed things of between private and public you can go through that next and this is what i mentioned that is a community cloud community cloud is a fourth one it is shared by several clients and support a specific community group sharing concerns regarding mission security requirement policy and compliance consultation may be conducted by <clears throat> clients or a third party and may exist on site or off site that way next now we are coming it is like you know, like uh, there's uh, this one um, smart meter rollout now it is happening in india you know at the national level and state level 
you know, they are all uh, trying to implement it. Already done it and as a part of RAPDRP um, by connecting, by monitoring the transformers level. Now, we need to do that. Uh, lots of directions and uh, lots of completions are coming. So friends, like this, we should not be there. We should have done it about 15 years ago or uh, about 15 or maybe around 18 years ago. Now we are trying to do that. So what happened? We lost time. We have we lost experience. You know, we don't have hand handling. Now the, it is demanding. So now we have to put very big numbers in terms of millions. So we don't we have not developed that kind of uh, expertise, all such things. So friends, why this cloud is computing is important. Worldwide, you know, whole cloud spending predicted to reach. Five six billion dollars by 2021. It has never been more vital that the business understand fully embrace the possibility this technology can unlock. The first slide I mentioned that where are we going and where which countries are are they going very fast base. We are in terms of intensity less, but we are going very fast in terms of percentage. Only in China is um, before us. So before cloud computing, companies had to store all their data and software on their own hard disk server, the bigger company, the more storage they needed. This way of treating a data is not scalable at speed. For example, if word started spreading about your business and you suddenly had a lot of online orders, your server would probably crash. Good business meant hard work for the ID department. Today, technology, <clears throat> today the cloud technology means the companies can scale, adopt at a speed and scale, so accelerate innovation, drive business agility, streamline operations, and reduce cost. Not only can to can this help to propel to help propel companies through the current crisis, it can lead to increased sustainable growth according to the future system research. Companies that are more strategic in their approach to technology are doing better financially. This is what the prediction is a reality too. They are achieving more than twice the average revenue growth of a company slow to implement and use their technology. In fact, 95% of leaders have adopted sophisticated cloud services. Next. And we Tell that, is the cloud secure? It plays important role. Their business depend on it. Plus that a security is very, very important. That data stored cloud is probably safer than the data on your hard drive. But this doesn't mean that companies and people should not be vigilant. Providers have robust methods of securing the cloud and keep the laser focus on encryption and cloud security. The uses of cloud and however, need to be responsible for application of security and uh, securing the and securing the environment they create. Next. So <laughs> there are few things the company can do to minimize the cloud security. Define new security policies and process producer have already existing, most likely to address cloud lane passage. And configure the appropriate framework. Third one is identify the relevant controls needed to monitor policies and produce to make this sure they are compliant on an ongoing basis. Create cloud-specific security. Move to a develop DevSecOps model where infrastructure get treated like application support and get scanned before being deployed to check it for misconfiguration or non-compliance. Next. Next. No, no, previous, 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 previous. We have gone a little far. Ah, yes, yes, 
the future of cloud at the beginning of 2020 covid crisis unfolded business began to accelerate the digital transformation of cloud to help navigate the human and business impact it is clear that the working from home and business continu continuity have been made possible by cloud computing yes this is what happened so what we have witnessed is nothing but a cloud computing the importance of cloud technology is even more apparent when we look at the performance gap that already exists between the enterprise technology leaders and lakers. Almost overnight, the gap has widened. Leaders who invested in cloud technology as part of their digital transformation journey have been able to adjust their supply chain and way of buying at speed. They carry less fixed IT cost making it possible to cut expenses far quicker than Laker, who, are, who have been slow to migrate to the cloud. These Lakers are now aggressively partnering to refocus control cost and catch up. Next. So friends, I completed it. Maybe if you have one or two questions, I will take, otherwise I have completed it. Thank you. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much, sir. It was really wonderful having you. And uh, we have a couple of questions that we would be sharing with you. on. Ah, if you felt that one or two questions, important question you can tag, so I have seen that. One question, we can attack it so that I can. Okay, uh, just. Yeah. Dakshin Kujarat, no? Can you please, uh, if you check chat box? Uh, one second, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. One second, one second, sir. One second. Ah, yeah, yeah. You're all very new to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, I can able, I can able to read it. I can able to read it. For AMR or AMI, which model of cloud computing is more reliable or utilities? A friend, uh, where government utilities find rule and regulation to adopt cloud computing? because government data is very confidential. So data security and integrity is concern of things. So friend, <coughs> friend uh, in fact, now there is uh, uh, nothing uh, prevents us uh, because the amount of data generated through AMA is mind boggling and, that, and, and it is going to increase it. As I mentioned that, you know, you will be loaded with so many other things like So you are on mute. Storage, all such things. Then electric vehicle, storage, you know, renewable, all such incomes, you know, the data is so high. Certainly you can go for, um, you know, public, sorry, public only. <clears throat> Private, it is very difficult for utility to have this control center, you know, data center running, patches, you know, renewing license, training people, and obsolescence. It is all headache. And you can have kind of, a, you know, this SLA, service level agreement. You know, there, this, it is not that new. It is not, absolutely it's not a problem. <clears throat> you can have service level agreement. You can have it to see that now they are responsible. They, they cannot, uh, they, 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 they have done it much, much higher level. So they can do that. So we can go for, uh, certainly I will, I will advocate because we were shouting the uh, AMI about 15 years ago, but now it is happening. This should not happen here. You can see so many examples are there to go for, um, in a public, uh, So you are on mute actually. 
Mr. Murugeshan, you are on mute actually. Uh, something you can uh, mention that, but all your things are uh, answered because many people have gone, many countries have gone, big, big countries, you know, big, big, big corporation, utilities have gone. So there is uh, nothing we, we fear about, uh, like, you know, AMI. You could have done it 15 years back, but so many things, you know, we are fear, afraid, see that. Now we, have, we want to roll out throughout the country without uh, much uh, experience, all such things. So like that, friends, you can go for that. Hybrid also, you can go, but depends on the type of, uh, no, no, the data and all such things, you do that. Uh, second question, uh, the, the you are asking about these uh, utilities, where the government utilization and rules and regulation, uh, okay, adopt uh, cloud computing. You see, they, they see with these are all things, you know, you have to move it. Nobody will say that like in, now, previously it was an option for your rolling out to AMI, all such things. Now, government of India itself is saying that you have to do that. So we should not come to that level. So to proper understanding of the rule and you can convince the government and uh, with all such things, so, so many utilities have gone for uh, things like that. So you can do that can go for that. And as I mentioned that, you know, we need to see that what is the regulation demands that. When the regulation demands for that data, you can keep it in your local servers. So that way, you know, majority of things you can shift it to uh, your cloud computing that way. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end. I hope uh, we had a very, very informative time and all the sessions were amazing. I would like to thank all the speakers, uh, the all the uh, sponsors and the panelists as well uh, for being there and for being uh, so interactive throughout the session. Uh, thank you so much once again. For now, this is MC Parveen signing off. See you all next time. Have fun and have a great time. Thank you.